Alright. <clears throat> Hello everyone. Um, what we're going to do here today is we're going to look at how we solve um, equations. And so what we're going to start with is what we have in expressions. And if we look at a general expression, these are called terms. Everything that's separated by an addition or a subtraction is terms. And as I've said in earlier things, additions and subtractions are the same thing because we had the idea that we could write any subtraction as addition of the opposite. And so what we want, want to look at are terms. Now in this term, it has a variable. So it's a variable term. And this term here is a constant term. Nothing varies, so it's held constant. And the variable terms can have numerical quantities too. So if we look at 5x minus 4, this is the variable term, this is the constant term, and in front of the variable is a coefficient. It's some number that multiplies the variable. Now up here there was a hidden coefficient of 1 because anything multiplied by 1 is itself. Um, lazy mathematicians don't like writing the extra information. And what we end up doing mathematically is we tend to find like terms. And these are terms that have the same form. So 3x and 2x have the same form. They have the variable that's to the first power and some coefficient that multiplies it. Um, negative 6y 2y and y all have the same variable and variables to the same power. Negative 3 and 4 are the same terms as in constants. What is unlike are things like 5xx squared. The variable's the same, but the power is different. And that lets us, that makes these terms different. Another thing to watch for is if you have two variables, a lot of times we'll use a and b to describe something. Um, we can write the variables in different orders. Right here the a is first and the b squared is second. Here the b squared and the, and the a is second. Now. A little while back, we saw if we multiply any two things together, we can switch it. And so these are like terms. They're mathematically the same. We, these just happen to be written in a different order. Let me scroll down a bit here, get some more blackboard space. And so like terms kind of drives what we're looking for. Now. Earlier, when we talked about multiplication, there was a rule that combined multiplication and addition, and it was called distribution. And I showed it in terms of numbers, and it has a geometric idea. So if I want to find an area of something, I multiply its width by its height. And so I could multiply its width times its height, and that would give me the area. But at the same time, that area is composed of the area of the upper rectangle and the area of the lower rectangle. So I could say multiply the width times the height of this rectangle, that's A times B, and I can multiply the width times that rectangle, and 
I would get either, either of these ways of doing it would give me the area of the rectangle. And this is a pattern we see in number, and it's called distribution. And with distribution, we can think about, let me just draw it out here, that if I start with this, the A gets distributed to each term inside of the parenthesis, and that gives me the AB plus AC. The same thing happens in reverse. I can pull the A out and get back to this. And, and this is a pattern in, in number um, that we have to look for because um, it can help us change how our things look so that it works for us. So the distribution property lends itself really, really well to like terms. If I have like terms of 7x plus 5x, that's equivalent to I have the same thing here. So I can pull it out, reversing that distribution. And that gives me 12x. We call this process of pulling up out the common part of the term and adding the coefficients, we call this combining like terms. We can think of it as how many x's do I have? Well, I have 7 times x, 7x, and 5 times x, 5x. So altogether, I have 12x. And that can help us take some complicated things and simplify the pattern for them. And our game in mathematics is to find pattern. So 8y plus 4y. Well, I can break it down like this. I can pull out the like part, which was y, and add up the coefficients. And I've combined the like terms. y minus 6y, if I pull out the y, well notice there's that unwritten 1 in front of here. Right? Remember I said the terms have a coefficient of 1, just mathematicians don't like writing 1's in front of things. And that's negative 5y. I've added up how many y's I have. And this even works if my terms are squared. So if I have this expression here, well, this term isn't like these other two terms, but I have 4x squared and 6x squared. So altogether I have 10x squared minus 3. And what this can do is this can take more complicated expressions and make them usable for what we're trying to do. We can um, get to the essence of the pattern or get to, get to things um, that we're looking for. So there's a couple other properties from real numbers that we need to look at. And we'll, we'll try to put these all together. The first is that additions and multiplications commute. Now the root of commute, and so we say we call this the commutative property. And it's the same root word as commuter to travel. And what we mean by traveling is that the order doesn't matter. Three plus two is equal to 2 plus 3. And the same thing with multiplication. The order we do multiplication in doesn't matter. And let's see, 4 times 3 is equal to 3 times 4. And this is the property. And this is underlying anything we do with a quantity. 
Additions and multiplications are also associative. And so we have an associative property. And what that says is that, you know, association, um, companions, who you hang out with. If I add A and B together and then add C to it, that gives me the exact same thing if I add B and C together and add A to it. So an example would be 3 plus 4 plus 5. Well, that's 7 plus 5 is 12. But that would be the same as doing 3 plus 4 plus 5. So 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 3 is 12. And so the associate property holds. And multiplications do the same thing. I can multiply a, b first, or I can multiply c first. So 3 times 2 times 4. Well, that's 6 times 4 is 24. Or I could do 3 times 2 times 4. And so that's 8. And 8 times 3 is 24. And we're going to have to exploit these properties. These are patterns that numbers do. They're not rules that we have, but they're patterns that are within number. And what we want to do is we want to use the pattern to help us change the way things look. Usually, the, the change we're going to is, to go for is we want things to be simpler to enter on the calculator or we want things to isolate a variable. So for example, 5,6y plus 5 plus 4y plus 3. Well, that would be a lot of things to enter in the calculator, but I have like terms. And what I can do is I can bring the terms together. So I have 6y plus 4y, that's a total of 10y. And then I have 5 and 8, that's plus 8. And so we collect everything that's like, and this would be easier to enter in the calculator. If I, all of a sudden I know that y is 2, I have a lot more steps to calculate here. Here I've reduced the steps to calculate. It also helps us get patterns um, that look similar. We can't, let me clear my blackboard here. I'm a little bit filled. So we'll come back up here and we'll erase this. Sorry for the noise of um, the pens and stuff on here. Uh, this is about as silent as I can get it. All right. Well, the same thing happens. We can multiply expressions. And so the distribution property can help us expand things or at least get this into a form that will be consistent in pattern. So I distribute the two to each term. 2 times 5 is 10, and 2 times x is 2x. And notice how I keep the plus sign on it. And so what we have is some rules or patterns that are constant within all um, numbers, all quantities, because the variables are also in this. And so we take these patterns in all quantity and, and we use them to do what we call simplifying um, expressions. And so let's get a more complicated expression here. In reality, I might do something and add 5 to it first, multiply the result by 3, and then subtract 17 from that result. Well, that would be the same as saying... 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times x is 3x minus 17. But I still have to combine these constant terms, and I want to write the 3x first, because a negative 17 plus a 15 gives me negative 2. 
And so we call this process simplifying expressions. Where we make, uh, make our um, expressions into a more simple form. All right. One more thing in this section, section 3.1, is that we can find perimeter. So let's get a triangular object here. But let's say it's something that I'm making a triangle, and I know it needs to have proportions where I have three times something of this leg. Well, that same something, I want to multiply by 7 on this and 9 here. And the thing we'll find is once we have a triangle, and we're going to measure this in feet. Once we have a triangle that has the proportions of 3, 7, 9, they'll all have the same shape and angles um, when we construct this if we keep the proportions the same. Um, something some of carpenters do a lot when they um, are scaling models up and down happens um, also within engineering when you make a small model and you want to scale it up you keep the ratios so you start with your small version of this and when you go to make it big you make z bigger but the perimeter if we remember from before um, says that we have to add all of the edges of a polygon and so we to find the perimeter how much stuff we need to enclose something, we add up the edges. So it doesn't matter that I have a variable here. The same principle happens. I add everything up. And in this case, because I'm using the same multiples, they're like terms. And so I have 10, or I have 19, times whatever that, and then this is will sometimes be called a scaling factor, because it scales how big the thing is. And, of course, my answer will be in feet, once I put that through. This geometry also shows itself in multiplications. So if I have a rectangle, and I'm designing it, and this is 2x minus 5, whatever I measured in, so in this case meters, and 3 meters, um, then in the area is the length times the width, or the width times the height, depending on what you call these. And so that would be 3 meters times 2x minus 5. So now I'll distribute and I get 6x minus 15 meters will be my area. Um, there's a common problem I use to actually show this, is if I have a rectangle and I want to make a box out of it, I can cut out the corners. Not the best cut. I really wanted them all the same size, so just give, deal with my drawing here. And so if I make a cut that's X in size, and this was, let's say it's a piece of paper, because paper's what, eight and a half by 11 inches? Well then in, I can cut out these corners of some unknown amount and fold it up to make a box, right? You fold this end up, you fold this end up, and you get a box. And if I want to figure out what the bottom area is going to be here, well, I have to subtract the x's from each side. And so that's 11 minus 2x gives me the width, and then the height is 8.5 minus 2x's because I have an X here and an X here that switches this. And this is a problem we're going to work our way up to. 
but that's why you would see something in in something like this. There's some alterca alteration you did to an existing thing. And this is a common example, right, in manufacturing, where you can build, um, construct material by taking a flat piece and bending it. But to do that, you would have to remove something. And so that's why you would see these patterns in mathematics. All right, this is chapter um, uh, three, section one. I'll continue another lecture um, to get the next section.